Now, there were actually two separate halves that make up the first task of this, our objective. The first half was configuring the Radius server, which is what we did in that last clip. But we also have the task of including a Radius proxy as well. If you recall back in that picture that I showed you early in this module, uh, we talked about how a Radius proxy is a special configuration for a Radius server that plugs essentially into other Radius servers. So rather than having a server and a Radius client talking to each other, a Radius proxy goes from client to proxy to other Radius servers. And so I want to show you over here that uh, in order to configure a Radius proxy, you'll notice here that we've already configured our first Radius client right here, so remote1.company.pri. And uh, a little later on, when we get talking about policies in that next module, we'll talk more about the connection request and network policies that are effectively what we just did and running through that wizard. But if we wanted to make ourselves a Radius proxy, essentially a machine that stands in front of other Radius servers, we would then need to configure, at minimum, at least, another series of Radius servers this machine could talk to. If I right-click here and choose New, you can see that it's possible to configure a set of Radius servers that combine together to create a Radius server group. So let's call this our group, for example. We won't actually be configuring a Radius proxy here, but I'll show you the introductory bits of how one would get set up. Once we name our group here, we can choose the Add button. And it's here where we go about actually configuring all the settings that a traditional Radius client, more or less, would use to connect up to a Radius server. Except in this case, we're pointing to some other Radius server somewhere out in the world. So nps1.whatever.com. Obviously, I won't hit the Verify button here because we don't actually have another Active Directory domain called whatever.com. But as you can see here, this provides a mechanism for us to then push that authentication from this location out to those other machines in whatever location that may be over in that other Active Directory domain. So here's our authentication port. We can set up the shared secret between us and that other server. We can also set up the accounting, which is what we'll talk about here in just a minute, as well as what the load balancing would be for those other machines. You may be required to know a bit about what this load balancing, what the values are here. In many ways, you can think of the priority and the weight as being very similar to how priorities and weights work over when we were configuring them for DNS records. Those servers with a similar priority will have their inbound requests balanced based off of what their relative weights would be. So all servers with a priority of one would then get all the initial requests until all servers with a priority of one are down. So I would be aware of what these priority and weight values are. They may or may not be on the exam, uh, but they provide a way for you to identify different tiers of servers and then balance the load amongst the different machines in those different tiers. We won't be creating a, a Radius proxy here. That's not the configuration that we're building here for a very small environment. But this is essentially the way in which you create one Radius server as the proxy for another.